Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing gastric acid secretion. Okay, so we've discussed how enterochromaffin-like cells release histamine at a basal level which stimulates parietal cells uh, which are in the uh, oxyntic glands of the stomach, and the oxyntic glands is just another name for the gastric glands. Okay, so it's just another piece of terminology. Okay, right, so if I just get my uh, histological diagram back again. Uh, here were the gastric glands here. Basically, another name for this gland is an oxyntic gland. Okay, right. So, what we now want to discuss is how you can increase uh, gastric acid secretion in response to a meal, basically. So, if you've just eaten a meal, uh, then you will want to increase uh, the secretion of gastric acid. Okay, now how does this happen? Well, basically, uh, gastrin is an important hormone in regulating the secretion of hydrochloric acid uh, by the parietal cells. Okay, so let me draw my picture of the stomach again. Okay, so here's the esophagus, here's the fundus of the stomach, here is the body of the stomach, and then down towards the bottom you have the antrum of the stomach here. And I'll put in the pyloric sphincter, okay, I'll colour it in a special colour, and then I'll also have the gastroesophageal sphincter up here. Right, basically, um, the cells which secrete gastrin are the G cells, and the G cells that are most important for secreting gastrin are those in the antrum, okay? So basically you find that the G cells in the antrum of the stomach, these can actually secrete gastrin, and this is going to regulate the secretion of hydrochloric acid by uh, the parietal cells, which remember are in the body of the stomach. Okay, right. So, uh, what we want to see is how this all works. So, basically, if you just eat a meal, okay, then uh, in that meal there will be proteins. Now, basically, proteins can stimulate G cells uh, in the antrum to secrete gastrin. Okay, so what will happen is proteins will come into the antrum. Okay, so we'll start with proteins and uh, they will migrate their way right down into uh, the base of the gastric gland, okay? So they'll make their way right down to here, and they will stimulate these G cells right at the base of the gastric gland, and this is occurring in the antrum of the stomach. Now, what do the G cells then secrete? And by the way, uh, G cell is simply short for gastrin cell, okay? So the G is simply short for gastrin. Well, basically, they secrete this hormone, gastrin. And what will happen is they'll secrete it into the blood. Okay, so these G cells will release gastrin. It will go in the blood. And which cells is it going to act on? Well, it's going to find its way to the enterochromaffin-like cells. Okay, so what's going to happen is the gastrin is going to come out of the blood at the enterochromaffin-like cells. So now it's found its way to an enterochromaffin-like cell here. So I'll draw another enterochromaffin-like cell, cell here. Okay, and basically gastrin acts on a receptor known as a cholecystokinin uh, 2 receptor. Okay, so I'll draw this here. So this box is going to represent our cholecystokinin 2 2 receptor, our CCK2 receptor. So I'll write its name out in full. So CCK is short for coli, uh, that's the first C, and then cyst is the second C, and then cystokinin, that's the K. So CCK is short for cholecystokinin, and this is the cholecystokinin 2 receptor. Okay, so there are many different types of cholecystokinin. Uh, this is really the cholecystokinin receptor 2, and I think I'll put that over here instead, cholecystokinin receptor 2. Okay, so let me colour in the cholecystokinin receptor 2. And basically, what this induces is it induces the enterochromaffin cell to release more histamine. So remember, the enterochromaffin-like cells, sorry, I said enterochromaffin cell again, I meant enterochromaffin-like cells. We're not going to discuss enterochromaffin cells in this video. Uh, they do something different. Uh, these are the enterochromaffin-like cells, okay? Uh, so gastrin will bind to the cholecystokinin receptor 2 here, 
And what will happen is uh, that will induce the enterochromaffin cell to release, enterochromaffin-like cell to release more histamine. So remember, the enterochromaffin-like cells uh, secrete a basal level of histamine that always keeps the parietal cells having a basal level of hydrochloric acid. Now, if the enterochromaffin-like cells suddenly up the amount of histamine they release, and then the parietal cells will also up the uh, amount of hydrochloric acid that they secrete, okay? So this is how gastrin is going to increase uh, the synthesis of, well, the secretion of hydrochloric acid by increasing uh, the secretion of histamine by the enterochromaffin-like cells. And it does this by acting on the cholecystokinin type 2 receptor. Okay, now, uh, another interesting drug that can interfere with this is that there is a competitive antagonist for uh, the cholecystokinin receptor 2, okay, and this is the drug proglamide. Okay, so proglamide is a drug which will bind to the cholecystokinin receptor 2 and uh, stop the gastrin from being able to bind there. Okay, so proglamide will bind without stimulating the cholecystokinin receptor 2. And basically it will bind in the same site as gastrin and it will stop gastrin from being able to stimulate the enterochromaffin-like cells. So effectively the enterochromaffin-like cells become deaf to the screams of gastrin basically. So the G cells are screaming at the enterochromaffin-like cells to release more histamine and their scream is in the form of this gastrin molecule. And when we put proglamide over the receptor for gastrin, which is this cholecystokinin receptor 2, then the enterochromaffin like cells can't hear the G cells anymore and they just continue telling the uh, parietal cells to secrete hydrochloric acid at the normal rate okay uh, and uh, you don't get that increase in uh, hydrochloric acid secretion that you would see in response to eating a proteinaceous meal Okay, right, so that's how uh, G cells can increase the secretion of hydrochloric acid in response to a large meal. Okay, in the next video, what I now want to discuss is how uh, vagal uh, inputs to the parietal cells can also affect gastric acid secretion.